Alright, you come back to watch Lesson 1.2. I'm happy you're still with me. That's great. Today we're going to talk about functions, inverses, and graphing adjustments, or what we've called these things like, I think we used the word transformation when we did this in Precalc 12. <clears throat> so some definitions you should know. <clears throat> Relation, once again, any set of ordered pairs. A function is a special type where if each x value has only one y value, then we call it a function. If it has more than one y value, we just call it a relation. Sometimes we use this thing called the vertical line test. So once again, if it crosses the graph at only one point, yay, that's good, it's a function. Otherwise, it's not. Domain and range, I hope you remember those terms, set of x values and also the set of y values. So looking at example number one, two, three, four, tell me if each are a function. I hope you can see that this one is really just a line. You can graph it out. Visually, it's nice, right? And you can tell by the vertical line test. Yes, if I draw vertical lines, it only intersects at one point, so you bet. x squared plus y squared equals to 1. That's the circle equation or the unit circle equation from Math 12. Notice if I draw vertical lines here, uh-oh. Crosses through 2. No, no. Number three, I hope you remember, is a parabola, right? Negative x squared plus 1. So if you were to draw, it looks like this. So this definitely is a function. And this one might be a little bit weird. If you were to solve for y, you get this with a plus minus. That's a problem because that means for each x value, there are actually two y values. This is actually a sideways parabola, so the answer is no way, not a function. You also should have learned function notation in math. 12 and I think chapter 10. f of x, just another way of saying y, but more descriptive because it tells me it's a function, first of all, with the independent variable of x. What you need to do is just wherever you see x in the expression, replace it with what you've got. The x value here is 10, so wherever I see x, I replace it with 10. 3 times 10 is 30 minus 1 or 29. Notice for this one, I don't have to replace it with numbers, I can replace it with letters, it's x plus delta x. So notice the g function is just x squared, or whatever you have as an independent variable is squared. So this is my independent variable, x plus delta x, and I just want it to be squared. And if you want to expand that out, you can, x squared plus 2 times x times delta x plus x squared, or delta x all squared. 7 and 8 are what we call composite functions, it's a function within a function, so notice in this case, the f of x is inside the g function, which means I'm using f of x, or its value, as the independent variable for my g function. So wherever I see x in my g function, I'm replacing it with 3x minus 1. And my g function says I should just take whatever I've got and square it. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get this as my answer. f of g of x, this is just another way of writing it like this, f of g of x. And that means my g function becomes my independent variable for the x. x for f of x is just this. And so the answer is just 3x squared minus 1. Okay. Hopefully that's a good straightforward review. Otherwise, chapter 10, pre-calc 12. Domain and range now for these lovely functions. You should have learned these functions in math 12 too. This is the square root function, looks like this. Hope you remember that all the numbers underneath the square root have to be bigger than zero, so therefore the domain is x is greater than or equal to 1. The range is, of course, greater or equal to 0, so there you go. Uh, number 10, the reciprocal functions for math 11. Hmm, do you remember having a vertical asymptote at x equal to 2? And drawing this funky graph? I hope you do. The domain is not equal to 2, the range can't be equal to 0. Number 11, I gave you the graph, yay! But you should be able to tell me the domain and range. Try. Yeah, there's two vertical asymptotes this time. And notice the range is a little bit tricky, it's bigger than 1, that tells you this portion up here, right? But also, y has to be less than 0, that tells you this portion down there. Okay. Some more terms, a one-to-one -one function. That just means that, like a function, for each value of x, there's one value of y, but also there is only one value of x for each value of y. So not only does it have to pass the 
the vertical line test, it also has to pass the horizontal line test. And an inverse function, that's where you switch x and y and solve for y. This notation, I hope you remember, f negative 1 of x, that's the symbol for inverse. And once again, the idea to solve the inverse is you switch x and y and solve for y. And if you have points, a comma b on the inverse becomes just b comma a. So you're switching the x and y values. Okay? Next page. This question says, which of the relations in 1 to 4 is a function, first of all, with an inverse that's also a function? So looking back at the previous page, which one's a function? We're only looking at 1 and 3. But which one of these, when I do the inverse, so that's when I switch x and y, I also get a function. And I hope you can visualize and say 1 is a function, because it's a line still. But for number 3, if I'm switching the x and y, the graph looks like number four and therefore it's no longer a function so therefore the only one that works you got it is example number one the line okay. how would you find the inverse i said to you earlier you switch x and y so this is like your y value you're going to switch it x equals two and then instead of having two x cubed it now becomes two y cubed and then you're just doing algebra to solve for y. So we'll add 1 to both sides. We'll then divide by 2. And then I want y, not y cubed. So I'll just take the cube root of the entire expression. And there you have it. But I would like you to use the notation. So f negative 1 of x equals to the cube root of x plus 1 over 2. Cool? All right, then there's the piecewise function, the stuff you did in grade 11. Notice this piecewise function has three parts. The first part is where x, where it's less than or equal to 0. That's this part. Then there's this other equation, 2 minus x, but that's only true for the values between 0 and 1. And then you have the x squared portion. That's wee, this portion over here for all values bigger or equal to 1. So really, a piecewise function is just functions with specified domains. So why don't you try number 14 here? Do you know how to graph this piecewise function? The first part is the absolute value of x. So if I were to just ignore this stuff over here and draw the absolute value of x, yeah, that's my v function. Yeah, cool. But wait, I do have to take into account this domain restriction. This is only true when x is less than 1, so guess what? It stops right here. And I'm going to put an open dot because I have a less than sign. I don't want to include the value of 1. Now, for the next portion here, I got x plus 2. So I know that's a line 2 that has a y-intercept of 2, slope of 1, so it looks like this. But wait, this is only true when x is bigger or equal to 1. So the only portion I keep of that blue line is right here and beyond. And so there's my graph of the piecewise function. If I ask you for domain, that means the possible values of x. If you look, I think it's all real numbers. And for the range, yeah, everything bigger or equal to zero. Cool. Zeros, we did this last section. <coughs> we solved using the graphing calculator, but wait, what if you don't have a graphing calculator or you don't know how to use it? <laughs> so I want to show you some conventional ways of writing zeros. By the way, zeros, x-intercepts, same thing. The idea for a zero is that the y value equals to zero. So for number 15, if I do this, you'll get a nice quadratic. You have to solve algebraically. Many ways of doing this. I know some of you like the quadratic formula thing. You can do that. But those of you who like F words, I know you love to say factor. Good. So we'll factor this. This is like two numbers that multiply to negative four and add to negative three. Remember that kind of stuff? Oh yes, all that stuff from pre-calculus. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Same thing for number 16 with a rational function. You just want to make y equals 0. I know you have a denominator, but don't worry, because I can just multiply both sides by the denominator, and you'll still get 0 equals to x squared minus 4, 
So ultimately, it's just the numerator that makes the zero. You can factor this one as well, but I know many of you just like to solve, and so I'll just solve like this. And many of you do that, and you get that. And I say, no! What did you forget? I'm taking the square root on both sides. Don't forget to put the plus minus. Two answers. Okay? Two answers. Alright, I hope this is review. You're going to use all these skills in calculus right away. So make sure you have this in your head. Next page, some graphs that you should know and have viewed before. The line, x, the parabola, good. The cubic, the quartic, the root, the cube root. This is probably the only new one here. X to the power of two thirds. We don't use that that much, but you should be aware that's what it looks like. It's kind of like the square root with two wings. The absolute value you've seen before, the reciprocal you should have seen before, and the circle you should have seen before. All these graphs you've seen before in math 10, 11, and 12, we'll see these again in calculus. And the idea of graphing adjustments. So here's a summary of transformations. This once again was, I think, pre calc 12, chapter 1. Whenever you see negatives, what does that show? Reflections. Outside of the function, across the x, inside the x, across the y. If I add a number at the end, it's shifting up or down. If I change the number inside, so I put it next to the x, it's a shifting left or shifting right. It's always opposite of what you think. An a value in front of the function is a vertical stretch. A b value inside the x is a horizontal stretch or squeeze. So once again, opposite. And then don't forget these lovely absolute values. If the idea is to take the absolute value of the entire function, then everything below the x-axis is gone. And it's reflected to be above. And this one might be new. But this says just reflect all the x values. Meaning, I want you to get rid of all the negative x values because they're no, they're, no, they're no longer there. So it's completely eliminate points to the left of the y-axis. And then you really just do a reflection of the right half of the graph over to the left because the negative x values are now the same as the positive x values, which of course produce the same y values. I'll show you this in example. Turn the page. All right, I've got my lovely graph. I'm going to ask you to do these transformations or adjustments to it. I always like you to tell me things in words first before we actually do it. And you don't have to do it all in one step. You can do it in two or three. f of x plus 2. Notice this is inside the bracket. So what's going to do with the x value? This is a shift 2 to the left. So all I need to do is take this graph and move every single point 2 to the left, 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 and then just draw. Same shape, just a transformation. 18 though, this 2 is not 2 to the left, that means going 2 up, and that negative is a reflection in the x-axis. Now when I have two things, what do I do first? I like to think about Bert. Bert and Ernie, my friends from Sesame Street. I don't know if you guys actually watched that when you were young. But it was a good show. B stands for the basic graph, so we start with the basic graph. E is my expansion and compressions, so the stretches. R then is my reflections, and then finally I do my translations. So in this case, I would reflect first. So if I reflect in the x-axis, that point up there is now down here. The one on the x-axis stays as is. And this one down here, which was here, now goes up there. So, do 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 And then I'll shift two up. So go two up, two up, two up, two up, two up. Wee! I'm done. Number 19, y equals one half f of negative x. So once again, I see a vertical compression by a factor of half. This uh, negative is a reflection in the y-axis. So once again, looking back at my original graph, I'm going to do the vertical compression first. So this y value is 2, it's not 1. 
the y value at 0 stays at 0 because you can't really compress 0. The y value at negative 1 becomes now negative half. So here's my compression, flattened it out. Whoop. And then I'm going to reflect this in the y-axis. So then these points go over here. This one goes there. Whoop. And then this goes over here. Whoop. Oops, not there. Whoop. Whoop. Ooh. Whoop. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. And now, what about 20? Put that 2 inside. That's a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. So I'm taking the x values and squeezing it closer to the origin. And then the absolute value, of course, says, hey, I need to reflect all the points below the x-axis to be above the x-axis. So let's do the horizontal compression first. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then that becomes at 1.5. So there's my squeeze. And then the reflecting part says take all the points below the x-axis. That's just this stuff here. And reflect it above. So whoop, there we go. And then the rest we keep the same because they're all positives. No worries. Nothing happens to them when we take the absolute value of positive. And then finally, the last one. Once again, what I'm saying here is the following. Let me just graph out the original first, okay? The absolute value of x means anything that's negative for the x values is now positive. So guess what? This part disappears. And then what else happens? Well, then you just, just replace the left half of the graph with the mirror image. Well, the mirror image is just this, so there you go. Done. Okay, so if you're curious what happens with this, the idea is to eliminate points to the left of the y-axis. And then step two will be to replace the left half with graph of the mirror image of the right half. Okay? That's it. So now go ahead and try assignment 1.2.